Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian. I'm joined by the original stunt man himself, mm. Rich Stamboli. Stuntman Mike. I you are Stuntman. Was oh. that was that your name? Stuntman Mike? Yeah, Stuntman Mike from uh, Death Proof. What's going on, dude? Dude, a lot is going on. I'm Holy here for it. I'm here you know, for I gotta it. tell you, I had a very, um, this week has not been my personal life, right? Like, not in wrestling stuff. It's been very hectic. Uh-huh. Uh, we did the watch along on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a big event at one of my venues in the city. I saw. So that was a very, very big deal. Um, and it kind of exhausted everybody mentally and physically. Wasn't the uh, big sign in the back of that city event, I came, I saw, and I came again? Yeah, that was it. That was it. <laughs> it's all over Manhattan. Uh, so uh, we ha- I've had a really hectic week. But man, yesterday was a blockbuster news week. Uh, we did, I did a show on Tuesday, obviously, uh, mm-hmm. one of my new shows that we're doing here. And also we're adding another show. I got to talk to Rich about this to see mm-hmm. if he wants to be part of it. And Rich's camera's starting to break here because it yeah. turned off and turned back on. Look at that. I already said yes to that second show, by you the You did? Way. Yeah. You talked to me last week about it. The interview one. Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, good. <laughs> Where's good. your brain at, man? Dude, I, it's all over the place right now. Yeah. You know, are you, this is, today is Thursday, uh, July 20 something, 2021. <laughs> We're in the future. Are you in 2019 right I'm in, now? I'm still in 2019. So a lot's going on. Rich, tell me, how was your uh, how was your birthday weekend? Tell me while I fix your camera. I am, I am, so, I feel like I have, my skin is PTSD from the sun, to be honest with you. Like I was out like all week last week and there was a heat wave in New York. I feel like I was the last one to know about it because I was unceremoniously outside every single day. I had to spend yesterday pretty much in a darker room. Jesus. Was like, I was like knocked out, man. Like oh, I'm, that's why I'm so the tan of the better for me. Listen, man, I just my skin does not pick up a tan at all. Like my arms do, but like my face and every my you know my ding dong. Yeah, yeah, nothing perpetually dark. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> nothing. All right, so uh, I guess we should go into this story. This is the uh, the big, big, big story here. Uh, I'll begin stories. with the with the with the last one. And that is the really? Brian Danielson story. Okay. Oh, you thought I was going into I, October, didn't you? I thought you were going into October. No, not not yet. I would not have survived that news. No, <laughs> not to start the show. <laughs> well, we couldn't get to anything else if we started mm-hmm. with that. But uh, Brian Danielson, obviously Daniel Bryan, WWE superstar, world class professional wrestler, uh, it's being reported uh, that he has signed with AEW. Now, do you want to go into Bodyslam.net? Uh, is reporting this. You mm-hmm. want to go into uh, who's reporting and what you think? I want to get your opinion on So uh, Cassidy Haynes from Bodyslam.net has reported this. This has not been confirmed, quote-unquote, officially. Um, what's kind of cool is that his return might be at that Arthur Ashe show in Queens, which we'll be at, yeah. and I can't believe you managed to snag those tickets. I did snag Thank you. Oh, you, you were shocked, dude, right? I was shocked. I was so shocked. I called in a favor. Andrew got $80 tickets that... Within 15 minutes of these tickets $350. on sale, they went through for $350 each, which is effing bananas. Yeah. So for Daniel Bryan to show up at what? This is going to be 17,000 people? Uh, Probably. between. Let's, let's say, say 17. Let's, let's say 17. Let's say between 10 and 17. No, 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 no. It's 17.5 right now. Okay. It's going up. Right now, they, they've sold about 17,000. I think Secondhand Market has about 1,000 tickets. For sale, and I believe there's like another twelve. I, at last I checked, I, I mean, obviously this changes every day, but uh, there was like twelve hundred actual tickets or nine hundred actual tickets, something like okay. that. But they're, they're, it's pretty much it's going to be a sellout. So here's two things that if if this is true and Daniel Bryan, Braniel, uh, Braniel, Braniel, <laughs> Braniel, uh, Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson, listen, if he shows up at Arthur Ashe, he'll blow the roof off the place. I bet you it might not even be necessarily to wrestle on the spot right there. He might just come out and wave to the fans and then go to the back. Well, know, listen, I, I, see you Wednesday. You know, th- this is getting very interesting. So mm-hmm. uh, I've been talking to Cassidy. So last night uh-huh. we were, we were, you know, he, he told me he's about to drop this bomb. He did. And we were talking about this because, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you have to kind of piece story together. Mm-hmm. Uh, we all get different stories. I don't have, uh, well, that's changing in a week or so. Right, right, my, right. My AEW context, but... Uh, I don't have a strong AEW contact, so a lot mm-hmm. of what I hear is through the WWE side of things and right. WWE partner side of things. Um, one of the ways I have been able to kind of determine returns and firings and debuts and things like that is through their uh, corporate partners, mm-hmm. like 2K, for example. I'm not saying it's 2K. I'm not saying it's Mattel, but those mm-hmm. guys don't get kayfabe. 
right? You can't work those companies. So mm-hmm. uh, there was a lot of stories going out early in the week. Mike Johnson had a story about Daniel Bryan's merchandise packaging from for 2021, 2022. There's nothing in play. He's mm-hmm. not going to be in the video games. There's no merchandise ideas. WWE has done that in the past for negotiation purposes, mm-hmm. where they essentially say like, well, we don't have any uh, any merchandise. We're not going to sell any merchandise since we're negotiating. Or they'll entice you mm-hmm. and say like, listen, while we're working on this deal, why don't we work on a merchandise deal, a licensing right. deal on the side? Mm-hmm. And it kind of like that's one foot in the door for you. So now WWE kind of has an advantage in negotiation. A lot of companies do this, by the way. Mm-hmm. This isn't a, 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 a WWE concept. Right, right, right. I've done this. Right. Great example. I hired somebody about two weeks ago. Uh, they want a very high salary. Mm-hmm. I'm not prepared to give them that. But I did get their foot in the door by compensating something else that they could do for us. Okay. Until, you know, and obviously they're working way less and whatever until that we could figure out something. It, it's something right. that happens all the time. Um, I spoke to somebody at 2K. Mm-hmm. And if you follow the show, you know, you know, we've broken the sting story. Right. Yes. Uh, it was Sting. It was Goldberg. And it was the Ultimate Warrior. All came from 2K. Yeah. And uh, the... I can say that now five years later. Awesome. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, it was a it, it's uh, the person is no longer there that I used to speak to. But, you know, generally he he knew what was happening because 2K has to be prepared and know what the what the um, positioning is of mm-hmm. this talent. So for Daniel Bryan not to be in the game. And he said, you know, what was interesting? There was no option for for uh, downloadable content for him. Mm-hmm. So they said no. That he was told, absolutely, he's, they're not going to do that. Wow. Listen, this could all be a play by WWE. Uh, I can't confirm this because I haven't been told anything by anybody on an executive level or a corporate level. But last night, I spoke to a bunch of people there, and pretty much everybody's under the impression that he's heading to AEW because of all these indicators. Uh, you could piece it together. Uh, Cassidy has tremendous AEW contacts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could tell you that about an hour and a half before Nick Cage debu- Nick Gage debuted last night, he's like, "Hey, don't say anything." But Nick is Nick Gage is showing up in the opening segment. <laughs> We're so, gonna talk about that. Right? So I mean, <laughs> you know, nobody was reporting that. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, you know, I I have confidence in Cassidy and, and and his track record with this stuff. So I can't personally report it, but I can say that I spoke to WWE partners. Also reached out to somebody at Mattel, uh-huh. and. There is no plans right now for anything for Daniel Bryan. Mm. Uh, obviously, things have already been produced and things like that, but there's no long, long-term long plans for a Brian, Daniel Bryan uh, action figure. There's no creative plans for months. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is coming from... Uh, I've, I've confirmed with a couple people, obviously, but this is getting very interesting. So the story is, like you said, Cassidy's reporting that the mm-hmm. plan is for New York City. It is for... Uh, that big show in Queens, Arthur Ashe at Arthur Ashe Stadium. That'd be cool, man. That'd be really, really cool. That yeah. would be a lot of fun. I think also because, like, you know, you know, this dude's gonna end up being like a wrestling machine. I don't even think he needs to be. He doesn't need to be. I, no. I, I think this is. Uh, it's too early to tell what the plan is for him, uh-huh. but this there was you know Dave Meltzer this morning reported, and obviously it'll be in a newsletter. Uh, and, and I had heard this also that there were four big signings, right? Two of them are big signings. And Tony Khan, he even said it during an interview that mm-hmm. he's going to have a lot of surprises coming up and he has big debuts happening, right? Obviously we got, right. we got Andrade yeah. and we got, uh, Alistair. Yeah. Now we're going to get, if this is happening, it's Daniel Bryan. And this leads us into the next big story that, uh, Sean Ross Sapp, friend of the show reported, uh, CM Punk is in potential talks to go to AEW. I'm very cool with that. I, you know, in, in talking to Sean, and Sean was adamant, and mm-hmm. I asked him this morning, I reached out, and I said, listen, anything you want me to add or remove from this that mm-hmm. you don't feel confident? He said, uh, that, I said, going to break, I said, I'm going to break down your CM Punk story, anything you want me to highlight. Just that despite what anyone is saying, it doesn't appear to be a finalized deal. Okay. Okay. I would say that there's more urgency. I, I find it interesting that the Daniel Bryan thing, I mean, personality differences too, right? Daniel Bryan thing was probably easier mm-hmm. if this is, if the, he is signed. Right. <laughs> uh, the CM Punk thing is taking a little bit longer, but you're kind of, you got about a month and a half 
Yeah. Because you definitely want him for Chicago. Right, right. If this is if this is it, right? Or you want him that that show before Chicago. Do you think so? You think like to sell more pay per views? I, I I mean the the match is gonna be Hangman and and Omega, right? right. That that's the match here. Mm-hmm. But how do you introduce CM Punk? In a important role. I don't think if he is signed, I don't think he should come out and be like, Mark Henry goes, oh, we just signed CM Punk. Here you go. And then he comes out to the Chicago crowd. I think it should be, you know, a big save. I think it should be Kenny, not even a big save, in the pay-per-view moment. All right. Kenny beats Hangman, knockdown, drag out match, right? Hangman loses. Kenny grabs the mic. I'm the belt collector. I am this and that. Oh, you think Hangman should, will lose? Yeah. Uh, Kenny's doing, he's still got all the belts. And then he goes, he starts yelling at the crowd that he's the best in the world. Yeah. Right? Yelling at the crowd. I'm the best in the world. I'm the best in the world. Crowd gets nuts. All of a sudden, you hear cult of personality. Boom. That's how the pay-per-view goes off the air. Yeah. Just punk showing up with his own music, and the crowd goes effing bananas, and maybe they have like a schmoz fist fight or something. Yeah. Listen, I, I, I could tell you, you know, if, if things always could change, right? Mm-hmm. If Daniel Bryan is, so- is not signed... You know, having this new speculate up and down and, and WWE seeing how it's gauging and how people right, are right. talking, uh, they may throw everything that this man wanted. I don't think that's going to be the case uh, in knowing, you know, people that know Brian Danielson really well. He's right. not he's not a guy that that's out for money. Mm-hmm. He wants, obviously, comfort for his family, and that's going to play a big part. He doesn't want to be on the road like that. He wants to spend time with his family. Uh, I think he realizes what's important in life. Yeah. And he's he's 40 years old. So if he could wrestle and make a huge impact in the business and have this great career, not uh, being part of this traveling circus mm-hmm. of working, you know, four nights a week or three nights a right. week like that, I think he's going to want to take that. Uh, same goes for CM Punk. CM Punk is, in, you know, he's a couple years older than Daniel Bryan. Mm. He's in his 40s as well. You only have a couple years to do this. And if you if if you are, you know, for CM Punk, for someone that was burned the wrong way by WWE. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, you know, and I'm not saying that his point of view is correct here, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know his point of view because he lived it, not me. Uh, if 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 everything that he says he still feels, he really wants to stick it to these people. And what better way to do it with this, you know, now yeah. now this confidence in this company. Uh, I think you, you were the one, you, you read it. I mean, when this story was happening originally with CM Punk, you had said that um, part of the thing about him was that he didn't want to go to a company that didn't have legs. Right, and like... People to wrestle. I think that's a big thing, or too. Or people to like, wrestle. If I'm going to yeah. wrestle, I want to wrestle people. I also feel like, again, this is just like hearsay and how I feel as a fan. But I also feel like, listen, it's probably a sweetheart deal that this guy might get. He might say, hey, listen, uh, put me on every other Dynamite. I don't want to do house shows. Maybe I'll do the rare house show. Yeah. And give me a trailer so I don't have to talk to anybody. Because I don't know if anybody wants to talk to me. No, I, know, don't, like, I, don't, I think he's going to I think he's gonna be... A lot of the CM Punk's... An, a hole mm-hmm. conversation. It's it's not as it's not true. You know what I mean? Like he's not walking around starting fights in the locker room with mm-hmm. people and stuff like that. By the way, we got a great comment by Matthew. I've always really liked this show. Now that I know that there's a frame glass houses in the studio, I like it even more. There you go. <laughs> there's my Billy Joel. There's my Billy Joel album cover coming to play. There's, here. A, there's your first Billy Joel break, guys. Bro. You want to hear my Billy Joel? Please. Ah, you went uptown riding in your limousine. <laughs> Is that Cal, Cal Channing? Is Cal, <laughs> do you know what that song is about? Mick Jagger's wife at the time. Really? Yeah. He's doing a little... Uh... You no, know, she, was, she was a bad girl. And he, uh, I think Christy Brinkley was annoyed by her showing off constantly. Wow. Uh, we got a $10 tip. You want to read this? All Elite Podcast with a $10 super chat. We'll, we'll, he could cut in line. Uh, hey, guys. Kyle and Tiff here from AEP. Just stopping by and showing our support for you two. We appreciate all the hard work you put in and keep up the good work. Same to you guys. Love uh, you both. Thanks, yeah, guys. Absolutely. Uh, all elite podcasts. Go check them out, please. They do a good job. <laughs> You're upsetting Joel Pearl. He said he used to love Billy Joel. and after, you're, you're ruining Billy Joel. I'm going to go to war with Joel Pearl now. Why? He's going to be my enemy. How come? You cannot say anything bad about Billy. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to hear that he, he crashed his car multiple times in neighbors' homes in Long Island. I don't want to hear about that. What's your favorite Billy Joel song? Um, I... Uptown girl, isn't it? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Zanzibar. Okay. Love Zanzibar. Mm-hmm. Love down east, uh, down east Alexa. Uh, Vienna. Uh-huh. I love Vienna. How There's many, too many. How many times have you seen Billy Joel? 
about 11. Did you see him at the residency? In, yeah, yeah, yeah a bunch of times. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, a bunch of times. I saw him at a hole in a wall downtown Manhattan. I know we've, we've, by the way, guys, if this is the first time you've come to the show, <laughs> I'm so, this is what we do. I'm sorry. I saw him downtown in front of like 40 people one time. Wow. And it was the most, it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. We were just drinking. He was like talking to everybody, playing the piano. Unbelievable. Super intimate. Like the song. Yeah, yeah. He was the piano. He man. was the piano. Wow. People were playing him. He just laid on a bar. We all just like went on his belly like this. <laughs> the cats. I don't think that was Billy Joel. No. <laughs> uh, so listen, let's talk about CM Punk now, right? Uh, yeah, please. Th that story is fascinating to me. I, I think it came out of left field. We hear the CM Punk returning stories left mm -hmm. and right. Uh, this is, you know, the big story. I, the people reporting this in my eyes. Yeah. Uh, they're not nobodies. Right. Exactly. Uh, I know Sean uh, pretty well. And how he does his due diligence mm -hmm. with saying stuff. Uh, he made it very clear that he has not been able to confirm this, but he felt the need to put, you know, that it's happening. So he feels confident enough to report on something, but right. can't confirm <laughs> that it's a done deal or anything like that. Listen, this is a very interesting time, and this is pivotal. Um, few of the things that I've heard regarding the AEW side is that they want to make a huge impact for this coming year. Absolutely. 2022 uh, and WWE as well. You know, WWE and AEW have gotten really competitive because they've realized that this is a unique opportunity to start over. Right. And the mistakes that you made prior to the pandemic no longer matter. Yeah, it's a it's it's a restart. We've been talking about this restart for a while. I think Sunday's Money in the Bank was a pretty decent example. Well, Friday was a good you example, know. right? Friday was a good example. Friday Night SmackDown. Uh, the Punk thing I always find interesting because at this point it's seven. It's seven. It's been seven years. Yeah. Right. Well, that's the other part, right? He hasn't wrestled in seven years. So either he's super fit and healthy. I think he's very super fit yeah. and healthy. Um, I think there's a lot of discussion about ring rust. When when you wrestled at that level, yeah. Um. It's it's a rarity for you to come back and be like, well, you kind of missed the step without injuries and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people are talking about the CM Punk stock, you know, being yeah. down because he lost those fights. Uh, you know, uh, there's it's fascinating how the internet turned on him. Oh yeah, dude! Like it went from it went from he did that podcast mm -hmm. in November. He dropped it. What was it? Thanksgiving Eve or Thanksgiving? He Thanksgiving, dropped that podcast yeah. with Cole Cabana. And he was really um, like this this outspoken, mm -hmm. you know, voice of the Internet for about two weeks. And then people turned on and him. And then people turned on him because they realized that he's not coming back and people get yeah. very disappointed and they get angry. Um, listen, it, having a CM Punk on anybody's roster is a huge asset. Yes. Same thing for Brian Danielson. Uh, is this, you know, the moment for AEW? Will September change the course a little bit? It definitely helps them, especially with the content that they're putting out, right? Like, why not? Because they have Rampage, you're going to have Dynamite, you have Elevation, and you have Dark. You have four shows that they're putting on, Yeah, you know? You can easily divvy up your new talent and old talent and veterans and, you know, just have, like, a nice mix of people. Tony Khan is creating a very interesting sandbox, you know? And yeah. especially with the relationships between other companies. Now, if Danny Bryan signs with AEW, who's to say he won't show up in New Japan or Impact, which would be kind of cool. Right. Well, uh, well, we saw that deal right at the end of Impact. There was a yes. uh, there was a the, the I guess, bumper, the right? bumper, yeah. and it showed all the companies working together, mm. uh, which is interesting. Uh, you know, we we've spoken about this. Part of that concept for All In was to eventually move this into this WrestleMania type event with mm. multiple multiple promotions playing a part in it. And you know, like think about uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of great what ifs you could do here which I don't want to, we have so much to get to and I don't want to do right yeah, now, yeah, yeah. but there's so many what ifs you could do. You know, a Cody CM Punk match, which I think would be blockbuster considering that they they kind of teased some heat with that early negotiation a year ago. Oh, forget it. Um, You know, you have Brian Danielson, you have Andrade, you have a really unique stack roster with tremendous talent. Now you just got to do it the right way. Uh, when we get to the AW conversation, I'm going to get to some of the complaints about last night because a lot of people are noticing this roster is really full. Stacked. And it seems a little cluttered, and it seems like there's a ton of parallel booking happening here, which yeah, a lot of yeah. people don't like, uh, which we'll get into. but Which is fine. Um, so let me just see here, uh, Rich. Sam Punk negotiation possibly for a return, talking yeah. to AEW. Sean Ross Sapp, obviously, a FIFA mm -hmm. uh, reporting this. Uh, just... 
Well, very me, interesting stuff. Let me ask you something real quick before we get off the CM Punk topic. Yeah. A lot of people are kind of like lukewarm on the guy for some reason. What do you remember most about? I do want to tell people, by the way, I, I want to say that, but yeah. I do want to say I, I have a kind of a big story that I'm going to talk about in a couple minutes here. So Beautiful. if you're watching this, stay tuned because I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, everybody's getting a little risky. I'm, I would, <laughs> I would normally sit on this till it's closer to the day, but I'll, I'll talk about it today. Coming, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah. Go ahead, Rich. Sorry. So the biggest moment that I remember for him. What do you what do you remember from Punk? Like what stands out at you? Is I was I was at his debut. OK. Uh, at the Hammerstein for, in ECW. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, you know, there was a lot of speculation about him that day where nobody's going to react to him. When that okay. man showed up and he beat Justin Credible, uh, th that building was on fire like yeah. everybody there knew obviously he only had like a couple thousand people there but mm. i knew he was a hot act he was the internet um, i think the biggest problem with cm punk was that and this is by the way guys i'm gonna date myself we're talking 20 years ago now okay we're gonna go About, back 20 yeah, yeah, years yeah. <laughs> in 2001 or in, or 2000 i started hearing all about this guy cm punk mm -hmm. cm punk cm punk then 2002 2003 Everybody was talking, this guy's the future. He's a future guy. He's like Austin. He has that attitude. He's this age. And then he debuted. And then people saw him and they're like, oh, that's who he was? I think people envisioned like this jacked up guy that was kind of like a martial artist. I think they imagined Steve Austin. <laughs> because remember, this is before, this is before, like this is, we're still in the forum days, right? Like right, this right, is before right. videos are being circulated and pictures are getting posted. Like you don't really get a good gauge of this guy. Mm -hmm. But immediately when WWE got a hand, a hold of him, they're like, oh, this is him? So I think he had a bad start. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, his biggest moment was that pipe bomb. Pipe bomb. But like, I think. In his, WWE. I think his, if you let this guy talk how he wants to talk, he'll make money for AEW wherever he goes. Yeah. For the next few years. Uh, he could be a huge heel too. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Can you imagine? That'd be amazing. Uh, Ryan Martins, 499. Thank you very much. Punk and Brian going to AEW is the modern day equivalent of the outsiders jumping ship. Hope it lights a fire under WWE. The cross thing didn't help. Yeah, that was a big mistake. Uh, we'll get into that also. So uh, what was it for you? Biggest moment for him? Uh, I think, you know, the pipe bomb, the Undertaker feud, the title reign. It's the reason like... why we do this podcast, the pipe bomb. Yeah. Honestly, uh, we never we never intended on doing a pro wrestling podcast. Rich was doing the comic book podcast mm -hmm. that we would talk about some wrestling every now and then. But uh, that pipe bomb kind of brought a lot of us back uh to this you know obsessiveness with pro wrestling and really it it caused a that pipe bomb in 2011 mm -hmm. was the beginning of that boom of the 20 teens yes uh so we could you know that we could attribute it to that what time do we have to get out of here uh it was 11 33 i gotta get on but i could i'll get on the 12 30 okay yeah cool um let's let's keep it moving yeah uh $20 donation from tim anger is wwe killing cross he was destroy he, he is destroying NXT, but can't stand in Raw and SmackDown. Uh, we're going to get to that. I, I think they made a big mistake, but they're pivoting from this. I think they realized it was a mistake. Uh, go ahead, Rich. Where are we going? Uh, so apparently, SummerSlam is going to be in theaters? Yeah, this is pretty cool. So they do this. They've been doing it in Australia and in mm -hmm. Canada. And, and I think in the UK, they've done this before. But uh, this is something that they've teased for like a decade. Mm -hmm. uh, they've wanted to do this on a larger scale for a long time. But, you know it's kind of difficult having all the theaters running it and you know, how many, how many, how much money can you mm -hmm. generate and how will it impact your pay-per-view sales and your network sales? Now it doesn't matter. Right? Uh, no, now it doesn't no. matter. No, 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 it doesn't. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip the, uh, the other thing on the notes for a little bit later. Okay. Rich. I, uh, I think SummerSlam in theaters would be a lot of fun if, especially if it was at like, let's say, um, uh, like an Alamo draft house. Yeah. Where you can sit and they'll bring you beers and stuff and like you can, you know, have some drinks with your friends and cheer. How about you know? doing it in like sporting arenas? That'd you would have the garden, you know, you could have something that day. Mm -hmm. You could have like in the garden theater, you know, a couple thousand people in those these mm -hmm. mini theaters. I think it's a great idea. And, and you know what? Maybe you don't want to go to the show. Maybe the show's a little too far for you, but you want to watch it with other people. I mean, that's a pretty cool environment to be in, in, in like an Alamo draft house, having a couple of drinks and eating and, you know, hanging out with a bunch yeah. of people watching wrestling in a, in a big theater. I think that's really awesome. Uh, Money in the Bank go home rating was 2.33 million. Uh, I thought that SmackDown was fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a very, very good job on that show. They really, uh, I really liked it. I thought it was a really good show. Same here. That Roman opening tag match. <sighs> 
awesome. Roman passed the test. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Like, he passed the test. A lot of folks, uh, like, jumped down our backs on Twitter, uh, basically saying, like, or on the internet or whatever, basically saying, like, how could you guys like Roman so much? He's a pandemic champion. There's no way he's going to get that reaction he did. from a live crowd. A and lot he of did, and He did, and then some, you know? He was very booable. Yeah, no, very booable. They've done a good <laughs> job. Edge got a huge reaction, oh, yeah. obviously. Uh, money. It was it was a while ago, so we're gonna skip this. But Money in the Bank. What did you think of Money in the Bank, dude? I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I thought it was a a great. Show. I was so burnt out on the week, and I didn't even watch it on Sunday. You uh, watched it finally. I back. watched it on Monday, and I was like, "Yeah, this ain't bad. This is a lot of fun. This is very good. A lot of good moments." I felt like they got a little more loose with the actual in ring activity. Yeah, which I appreciate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, um, the guys were, everybody was feeling it. Yeah, oh, Ricochet, those Ricochet spots are awesome. Yeah. You know, like, the, I like the men's Money in the Bank match a lot. And you know what? The right guy won. Absolutely. So, uh, I'll, I'll go into the winners. I, I don't mm-hmm. want to dwell on the matches. Usos defeated Ray and Dominic in the opening uh, on the pre-show, 11 minutes, 26 yeah. seconds to get the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. You saw that coming, though. Yeah. Uh, Nikki Ash won the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. I think mm-hmm. a lot of people were surprised about this. Yeah, good for her. Uh, AJ Styles and Omos defeated the Viking Raiders to retain the Raw Tag Team Championship. I am shocked how over that act was with the crowd. That's, AJ and Omos. That was a fun match. Right? If Omos had, if he somehow developed intense charm overnight, he would be Vince's wet dream. Listen, he he's a guy with very little, he's like another Braun Strowman, right? Yeah. Very little training. Give him two years. Yeah. Give this guy two years. Uh, if it's going to work, it's going to work. MV, uh, uh, Bobby Lashley with MVP defeated Kofi Kingston in a squash. Uh-huh. He, I don't, you know, I hope this is part of a story now yeah. where like maybe Kofi can't cut it in these big world title matches. Mm-hmm. And this is going to lead to a Big E and Kofi thing, which they've wanted to do for okay. a while. This was planned out. I, I know that they were playing around with this idea when Kofi had the title. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Lashley murdered Kofi. I mean, yeah, just ragdolled him in this yeah. match. But listen, a lot of people were upset over that, but mm-hmm. you got to also remember, like they're they're treating Bobby Lashley rightfully so, like a Brock Lesnar, mm-hmm. like a Roman Reigns, very much. Yeah, uh, they're not treating him, you know. And the reality is, they want this guy to become, and and he is he he is a dominant world champion for them. They they've etched him really well. Yeah. Um, regardless if you like what they've done, I think I think on paper they've done a really good job of Bobby Lashley, and you know. Remember, he was shaking his ass a year and a half ago. Exactly. Or two years ago, whatever the hell that yeah. was. That, his, that was his gimmick. He was just show his, uh, his glutes. The weird cuck angle. The weird cuck <laughs> angle. Like, he recovered. Yeah. He recovered from this. And then some. Uh, Charlotte Flair defeated Rhea Ripley to win the Raw Women's Championship. People were so upset over this. Why? Uh, they don't like Charlotte. There's a lot of people that do not personally like her. Well, I don't. I feel like people don't see. This is like classic WWE booking, right? Charlotte beats Rhea Ripley, upsets the crowd. Uh, what's the what's the bigger loss to cement Nikki as a champion? If she took the belt from Rhea Ripley, people would have been like, eh, all right. Yeah, but you, you took know? it from Charlotte. Take it from Charlotte. And it worked. Right. Uh, Big E won the men's Money in the Bank ladder match, defeating Kevin Owens, Riddle, Shinsuke Nakamura, Seth Rollins, Ricochet, John Morrison, Drew McIntyre. This That's was right. a stacked Money in the Bank. I mean, yeah. really, they, they really had very high quality guys in this. 18 minutes, five seconds. Mm-hmm. Big E's the right guy to win this. Yep. Um, I've been told the some of the plans. I don't want to say all of them because things change, pal, right? Mm-hmm. I've been told some of the plans, and I, 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 I'm hoping they go with this. I think this is the moment for him. Uh, I think a, a proper cash in for Big E mm-hmm. would be the moment. I don't want to see it. I know there's speculation that he may do it at the pay per view. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. I, I, this is my personal opinion. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. Yeah, I would like to see him like build it little by little. Okay. Um, but we'll see. I okay. So Goldberg comes out challenges. Bobby Lashley on Raw, right? Yeah. Lashley, I think, tweeted out, "No thanks, old man. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fight you." Mm. Right now, imagine if Biggie cashes in on Bobby Lashley, gets the title, and he faces Goldberg, and, and he loses. Goldberg comes out and challenges yeah. him, and then Biggie goes, "No thanks, bro. I don't, <laughs> don't want to fight you." And it, Goldberg, that's Goldberg's thing. Where like he just goes up to every champion. Nobody and wants to like, fight him. Nah, it's okay, old man. You know, oh, and he's God. like. Ah, ah. 
What is he doing? <laughs> he just does that <laughs> to them and just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Bill Goldberg. You want to see it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 Gotta do the weird kick. Um, sorry. Also, I don't want to listen. Drew getting on those ladders made me very uncomfortable. Very, yeah, a guy with long legs like that should never climb. Kevin Nash, same boat. Uh, yeah. Roman Reigns defeated Edge to retain the Universal Championship. They went 33 effing minutes. And let me tell you, I loved, I loved the match. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel it was too long. Uh, Edge really looked great. I like this older Edge. I like, yeah. him now, I like him more now than I did during his peak. This is a uh, Vikings edge. I like this guy, man. <laughs> yeah. I really like this. And at the end, uh, John Cena, big return, humongous reaction. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ba- no booze. No booze. Nobody booed this man. Uh, they were very into it mm-hmm. uh, and very well done. Overall, Rich, great great crowd, right? Great crowd. Uh, Cena's return was pretty awesome. I got chills watching it. I'm like, you know, what? that was pretty cool. They did it, they did it right. Right, yeah. they did it right, and you know what? That was another uh, story that you broke. Which one earlier this year? Cena versus uh, Reigns. Cena versus Reigns. Uh, yeah, uh, and there's more Cena plans, by the way. I'd say A minus for the show. Yeah, super I, hot I, crowd. Listen, you know, it, it, here's here's the thing. I didn't do. I didn't rewatch it the next day that okay. I normally do, but I very much enjoyed it watching it during a watch along. Uh, did you you saw what happened? Right, uh, something I said got twisted and ended up becoming the truth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So can, can we go into that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so I, I'm going to break this down because I tried to explain this so many times on Twitter and yeah. just nobody was getting it, right? You got a, you got a couple in you. You guys got a little, you got a little so, twisted. You got, you get a little, we get a little loose on the watch along. I, honestly, dude, I didn't even have a drink. My mm-hmm. drink was like half full at the time. Oh, wow. So Deacon brought me a drink mm-hmm. and Harry made a joke early on. He's like, he's like, uh-oh, Adrian's going to start slipping because, mm-hmm. you know, that's a joke. I have a couple drinks on these watch-alongs and people start asking you and I start yeah. saying stuff. And I'm like, and then he goes, yeah, but if you give him too much, he's just going to start making up absurd things. Which. And this led into. Yeah. A Alex, a terrible Alex Jones impersonation, <laughs> challenging everybody and talking about the Bilderberg group and the Illuminati and the Bohemian Grove and the fluoride and. Uh, he's challenging Big E to the world championship. So the jo- well, what happened here was <laughs> what had happened was Jonathan, our our producer and and lead editor, who's on the nice by the way, who's now on suspension. <laughs> uh, Jonathan has been a naughty boy. He's on suspension. <laughs> he posted this, but you know the way that it, it it came out, like me saying it's Alex Jones going into the impersonation was like at the very end, and nobody listened to it. So all they heard was there's a big debut happening on Raw and it's a Texan. Right. And it ended up being Keith Lee. <laughs> <laughs> so it worked out in your favor. It still worked or out. But, but you know, like I didn't want that because I'm like, dude, you know, like my credibility means something. I'm not yeah, really yeah, yeah. a journalist. No. I don't swing and miss. <laughs> and I only report things that I did I believe are happening. And uh, a lot of people think you're a journalist, which, which makes me giggle. You know what? It's fine, man. Whatever, whatever your definition is, it's fine. Didn't you go to uh, to like? Um, I'm a broadcaster. Didn't you go to school for like a car repair? I, I went. To, <laughs> I went to the ITT Technical School for engine oil change. Didn't you? That's where that? I went. Is yeah, that? I changed engine oil. Uh, I did take journalism though in college for the small time that I was in college. Everybody has to take journalism in college. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, listen, I think it was a, a situation of um, saying the loud part quiet and the quiet part loud. Yes. And it was cut off. And nobody, and that's that's the other thing, too. We're like, people have the attention span of termites. So, as soon as they saw the, the first bit of the clip, no, they, they, they didn't stick to the yeah, end but of I the had clip. People, I had people arguing with me, telling me that, like, oh, no, I'm, you're backtracking now because somebody got mad at you. You're oh, still you're lying. I'm like, dude, I, I, and then that turned into Tessa Blanchard. Yep, returning. That was you it, uh, or it, debuting. It got picked up on a bunch of news sites from your mouth. I haven't <laughs> said <laughs> her Blanchard's name in months. I haven't, months. Said Tessa, t- Tessa oh, I haven't said Tessa. Tessa I haven't said Tessa in months. So whatever, it, it, it happens. So as I, if you're uh, watching the show and you watch the watch alongs, please watch the whole thing. Don't just don't just tune us out. It's and a then different show. It's like. I need the news. I need scoops, you know, because that's not how it works. Sometimes, I get it, man. It's sometimes exciting. you get this shit. You get you get this guy talking about Alex Jones and the reptilians, and then people twisting that into Tessa Blanchard will make Monday Night Raw debut. You know, yeah, dude. Listen, it's all fun. Uh, it is. I, I love doing this. I love having fun with this. I got some crazy people on my ass now messaging me on in, on Twitter. Mm. Uh, I don't want to name the person. 
Uh, but it's uh, yeah. on Instagram, like it's becoming like stalking levels now. Who that somebody's talking to you? Uh, oh yeah. Like it's it's getting it's getting a little weird, and I and I may contact somebody. Oh yeah, these to put guys. Put a stop to it. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll deal with it. Uh, so interesting stuff. Very right. interesting stuff. Uh, let's go into raw. Uh, I want to be quick here because I do have a lot of stuff to, to go into. Raw, uh, 1.9 million up from 1.6 million. Cena mm-hmm. opened up the show, called out Roman Reigns. Uh, Cena's going to be on SmackDown tomorrow. Uh, so he mm-hmm. wants to match at SummerSlam. That's the, that's the match setup. Uh, WWE champion Keith Lee defeat, uh, WWE champion uh, Bobby Lashley defeated Keith Lee in a non title match. Keith Lee's return. Like a match. <laughs> um, you know, I didn't hate the match as much as people thought. Yeah. So there were. Some changes here to the card. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was told Karrion Cross is on the card. He's debuting around like 5 o'clock, mm-hmm. 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And and I was told that Bobby Lashley has an open challenge. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, cool. And I was told that he's losing. Okay. Okay. I knew he was losing. Uh, Sean and I were, were actually having a conversation about this, and we both had an idea mm-hmm. that he was losing. But according to Sean, it was still up in the air. They were like going back and forth on this. And I, all the credit to Sean on this. Mm-hmm. So, um, when I was when so I was first told the carrying cross thing, and then I was told he was losing. I'm like, oh, it doesn't make sense. Why the hell is this guy gonna lose uh-huh. when they're trying? They're gonna build this guy up to be a med- mega star. And then the Bobby Lashley thing gets announced that he's doing his open challenge. I'm like, oh, you know what? This is perfect. Yeah. Of course he's gonna lose, and I'm okay with this. This is what they did with with the U.S. title open mm-hmm. challenge with. Kevin Owens and everybody else. Uh, who was it? Kevin Owens challenged them. Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn. Yeah. It, it was it was actually really well done. I'm like perfect. Mm-hmm. Instead, we get we got Keith Lee debuting, <laughs> and it was you know it was a burial on commentary for Keith Lee, and and the match it didn't really bother was. me as much, but the commentary. Yeah. W- why? I don't know, dude. Sometimes, like again, we don't know what goes on in the back, but I I. It might be with Keith Lee that somebody in the back just does not like him for one oddball reason or another. Yeah. You know? But who knows, man? Uh, and then you had uh, the Carrying Cross debut, which was kind of cool because they announced that they were like NXT's Carrying Cross on Raw tonight. Yeah. And then who does he face in his debut match? Jeff Daddy. Jeff Daddy. Jeff Hardy, who does not need a win at this point in his career for anything. But you know what the justification is? It was a cheap win. He cheated. Yeah. But he's a former multi-time world champion. Exactly. So, <laughs> like, but you know what I mean? Like, it just shows you. And this is this is uh-huh. the problem here, right? It shows you the the lack of consistency with their with their champions. Like Jeff Hardy is a mega star. Yeah. Mega, mega star. One mm-hmm. of the breakthrough. He changed the industry for small, like thinner, smaller guys. He sure. created an entire genre of wrestler. Yeah, he did. And you now have him like in this like nothing match where he does mm-hmm. a roll up to win, and people are mad that a former world champion beat the new guy. You know what I mean? Like if it was right. any, if it was a champion of like the caliber of like what you envision a world champion, would anybody be complaining? Right. No, right. but they're complaining because of the way it was done and yeah. who it was with. Uh, <laughs> I think it was. Listen, it's fine. When it's I TV. I asked about it, yeah. everybody said like, "Oh, I don't understand why everybody's freaking out over this." Uh, this was just one step in the direction that we have for carrying cross, right, and right. this is leading into something. Um, this was, by the way, that that's something that was said to me. Uh-huh. So you can run that; it's not a thought. <laughs> I just need now need to kind of say this. Uh, but the, the the story is like, listen, it's one step. He didn't look weak. It was a cheat right. win, mm-hmm. and now you know the plan most likely will be that he's going to murder everybody. Well, two things: did they did they face off and impact? When he was Killer Cross at all? I don't think so. Okay. I don't know if they were, it was the same time frame. And uh, also, I thought it would have been awesome if Jeff Hardy showed up on NXT and beat him again. And like interrupted well, NXT- a promo and it was like, it's me, dude. I know. I, oh, I like your Jeff Hardy. And then, uh, and then beat him and I think the internet would have exploded. Is it, but like, this is what WWE does, right? They'll take a guy who's hot, uh, bring him a loss right up atop. Um, I feel like we're sometimes we're being consciously trolled because the internet is like the third man and WWE loves to listen to the internet only to say F you. Right? Yeah. Like they'll they know what's going on. They know how people feel online, but then they'll go F you. 
this is what we do. This yeah. is we're the big machine. This is what we do. Don't worry about it. He's gonna get the wife entrance and all that stuff. I wonder why he didn't show up with the Scarlet entrance. Do you think because it would have been like too much? Um, I have an I I somebody and I can't confirm this, but somebody there told me that it's like I don't know if this was his personal thought. I I said this on um we're live pal, but part of it mm. could be like Scarlet's like the urn, the power of the urn, and she's the one that's mm. able to motivate him to become this monster. Okay. You know, maybe they could play it like that where like she's like she's the urn. She's the urn. The power <laughs> of the urn. <laughs> My We're going to make your wife the urn. My father had this friend, this guy and he's dude named Ravo. Uh-huh. And everybody used to heckle him and tell him he looks like Paul Bearer. Mm -hmm. And at one point they put white makeup on his face. I swear to God, oh. this is a real thing at one of the parties, put white makeup on his face and drew the mustache. And he kept running around with like a heavy Guyanese Indian accent, no. like a West Indies accent, doing a Paul Bearer impersonation. This was like my fifth birthday. Wow. Or sixth birthday. I lived in a very, uh, very avant-garde lifestyle. You've always lived a very <laughs> avant-garde. You're quite bohemian. I'm quite bohemian. Uh, so people, you, you tell people that you're a manager at an adult uh at a men's club i'm not a man but you're really a barista you're a very high-end barista very high-end barista and every time you tip me i take a button off my Boom. Shirt. <laughs> like that. uh so all right we're done with the carrying cross stuff okay so this is interesting uh, we'll, we'll get to nxc right uh sure. internet lost their minds blah 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 uh raw women's championship main event rhea ripley defeated charlotte flair mm -hmm. uh via dq so charlotte right. takes off hits her with the belt blah 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 uh, Nikki Ash cashes in with a high cross body mm -hmm. and gets the win. One, two, three. What heat, first of all, uh, what did you think of it? I liked it, man. You know, I, I like this new character that Nikki Cross has. I think it's very... Do you want to know why? Why? Why they did the character? Why? Everybody's asking, why the hell would you do this? Fans are back. How many of those... Those uh, masks are you oh, going to sell? Yeah. How many of those capes are you going to sell? Mm -hmm. How many of the t-shirts are you going to sell? How many of the Halloween costumes are you going to sell? Mm -hmm. How many of the action figures are you going to sell? Think of that. Yeah. This is, this is exactly, this is a kid's angle. Uh, and example, my daughter, five years old, mm -hmm. do you know who she loves? Two people in this company. Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman. Okay. <laughs> and big, big show, right? My, my, actually, my daughter's a big, big show fan. I don't know why. It's huge. She loves the TV mm -hmm. show that he was on, the yeah. Netflix show. I don't. I have no idea why, but she loves Alexa Bliss mm -hmm. and loves Nikki Cross. Okay. And the boy with the red shirt, Bray Wyatt. Okay. <laughs> That's what she calls him. So it's a kid's angle. Uh, this is going to sell a lot of merch. Absolutely. 100%. That's the, I mean, not 100%. I don't, don't quote me on that. But that's the reason. I mean, this is a, this is a marketing opportunity for Nikki Cross. And listen, how could you be disappointed for her? Uh, Right. She was she was in she was in sanity with this nutty gimmick, which was freaking awesome. She was the last survivor of sanity. She really was. Yeah. And she came to the main roster. They did nothing with her. She mm -hmm. did that thing with Alexa and then nothing with her. And now she's the world champion. Uh, Pretty sweet. This is this is everybody's goal. And she achieved it. She achieved the highest possibility in professional wrestling. And that's becoming the world champion. Good for her. Mm -hmm. And apparently this she had a big hand in this gimmick, too. Good. I'm glad. I, re I really am. Yeah, good for her. Uh, NXT on Tuesday. Joe calls out Karrion Cross to open. Oh, so good. Regal interrupts. Uh, go into that, Rich, a little bit. Uh, that was so much fun. So, like, uh, Joe refereed last week's match between Gargano and Karrion Cross. Joe got laid out by Karrion Cross at the end of the match. Now you have, like, a pissed off Joe who's supposed to be William Regal's enforcer. And he's basically saying, like, no, I'm gonna, this guy's gonna get his comeuppance. Um, and you have Regal interrupting him, et cetera. This doesn't come back until later in the show. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, you got a pretty decent NXT. Bobby Fish and Kushida beat Roderick Strong and Tyler Rust. How far do you see this Diamond Mine stuff going? I don't know, man. I, I, I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. Somebody told me that this was not the original group. Okay. Uh, I can't remember who they said it was going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like this is a reset and they're trying to get other people over using Roddy, which I understand doing that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know how I feel about it. Guys, by the way, hit the subscribe button. We got over 200 people in the chat right now. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Listen, YouTube really likes subscribe and likes right now for their algorithm. Mm -hmm. So do us the favor. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the podcast. We do a podcast every single week here. Uh, live on Thursdays, sometimes on Saturdays, sometimes on Tuesdays, but mostly on Thursdays. We do watch-alongs here, and uh, we're, we're going to be adding a couple more shows, so uh, definitely hit the subscribe button. What else? Hit the bell. Is that what they say? Hit that goddamn bell. Hit the bell. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, so, moving on with NXT, Kyle O'Reilly beat Austin Theory. Uh, you got to defend Hasma Mariachi Madness. Uh, Odyssey Jones defeated Andre Chase in the uh, breakout tournament. Yeah. Um... I think uh, MG said Odyssey Jones is a Vince guy for sure. Interesting. Uh, Drake Maverick beat the Million Dollar Champion LA Knight non-title match. Raquel Gonzalez beat Zia Lee. Uh, Zia Lee had a bit of a medical scare apparently, and but she was announced that she was okay the next day. Um, and Karen Cross lays out William Regal to provoke Samoa Joe. So they are now gonna do Samoa Joe carrying Cross. Mm -hmm. I guess Joe wins. Joe takes the title and then Karrion Cross goes to, you know, murder Jeff Hardy there you go. for the rest of his life. Jeff just stalks Daddy. him. <laughs> uh, so I thought it was I thought it was a decent show. So here was a big announcement. NXT officially announced 822. We had reported that takeover was going to happen mm -hmm. uh, the day after SummerSlam mm -hmm. with and a venue wasn't announced, but it's b being implied that it's the uh, the CWC. So okay. they're going to be doing the Capital Wrestling Center. This was when I was told this. This I was told that this is a hold location. Okay. Uh, if they don't have another location in store, I think it's going to be a little bit difficult for them to find a location because think about the mass migration of people going mm -hmm. to Vegas, right, on a Saturday for Saturday and then coming back. Like, are you going to do two shows? Are you going to go? Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're also dealing with a smaller pool of people that are willing to go to shows right now. Exactly. So. Uh, that's going to play a part. Uh, I, I would hope that they have a bigger building, but if it is a CWC and this is the last time they do it over there, that that's fine. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it is rock. what it is. It's going to yeah. rock. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, spoilers for, uh, I'm not going to dive into the spoiler. Uh, let's not dive into the spoiler, but let, let us just say it's pretty much exactly what you think it would be. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't you want know, to guys, you can, you can figure this one out for the NXT. I don't spoiler. know if we have time to go into the impact stuff. Well, let's quickly talk about the cool impact stuff all right go uh jay white yeah jay white shows up jay white shows up after uh the main event teases uh too sweet with kenny show goes off the air as a run-in happens apparently it was filmed for new japan strong whatever yeah. like whatever the end of the show was will continue on new japan strong okay perfect uh i'm stoked you have jay white i think he introduces uh chris bay at it, some point as a new as a new bullet club as member, a new bullet yeah. club member which is pretty dope it's happening, guys. It's happening. Well, Bullet Club's making it. They're, they're, they're doing something with Bullet Club right now because we mm -hmm. even at the end of it, uh, Dynamite, we saw a Bullet Club run in. Yeah. Which was interesting. Uh, let's see. Bound for Glory promo, October 25th. AAA, AEW, New Japan, all teased for a crossover. So good. Very, very cool. Can't wait. AEW last night. Whew, what let's a show. go into this. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's go into the, uh, the WWE story. Uh, I sure. guess I'll go into it now, right? Uh, I guess so. I mean, like, do you want more of a setup? Do you yeah, want, you want do, to, want, do you want me yeah, to be like, do uh, do you want me to ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. And, uh, this is for Survivor Series, right? This is for Survivor Series. Andrew. Yeah. Who, out of er any star possible, yeah, who would you want to see at WWE Survivor Series? You know, if, because, well, here's the thing. Is uh, it somebody that rocks? Tentatively, um, I was told it's in mm -hmm. Brooklyn. At mm -hmm. Barclays, uh -huh. right? Survivor Series. That, that, this was about a month, well, more than a month ago, but I confirmed it that nothing has changed from a month ago. Mm -hmm. We still have some time. So I'm going to report this. I'm not reporting it with my 180% accuracy here, but I'm going to report that Survivor Series is in Brooklyn. Uh -huh. And, you know, big name you kind of want. It's a big show in a big market. Yeah. You're trying to sell out that building. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, who better than? Hold on, I'm getting message. You're getting message right now. <laughs> yeah, they're but... saying like, "Hey, stop us, stop it." Okay, there we go. No, no, no. Okay. So, would you say? Um, could, are we still going with? Yeah, this? yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Would you say that this person is? Uh... Huh. 
The most electrifying man in sports entertainment? Yeah, would I would you, say that this man is the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. Would you say that this guy's walking tall? He is definitely walking tall. Would you? He's not getting short. He's not getting he short? He get shorty. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, I would say, uh, is expected. They're working on this. It's expected that he will show up at Survivor Series. Pretty sweet, man. Pretty sweet. So, uh, you know. I feel confident that that's the plan. Mm -hmm. If it's not the plan and things change, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. But this was, I've been teasing this for months. By I way. think you're going to have to repeat but, it for everybody. But I could tell you that this is from three separate sources that wow. don't have the same contact. Mm -hmm. I could say that. Uh, so I listen, you're, you're getting ready. You're setting things up. Now, is he wrestling? Mm -hmm. I have no, I don't know beyond that he's there. So right. I don't know beyond he's there that we still got months till November, by the way. Exactly. You so might, a lot could change. It might be anything. It might be like you hear his music and the guys at the end of the ramp. It might be the tease for the following Monday. It could be anything. It could be him promoting Well, I can tell you, USA Network tentatively mm -hmm. wants him on that Monday. Okay. So I'm not saying that. And by the way, he's going to be, he's going to go everywhere, right? This isn't like a, like a raw storyline. Yeah. He's going like, to be on like two he's shows. He's going to be on everything, but tentatively uh actually i could get you today for survivor series yeah I, I can't get it right now but i could get you today for Survivor. would series. you say this person could successfully take you on a jungle cruise yes he can <laughs> but i want robin williams to take me instead i don't uh, want him to take though. me i want robin williams uh that's jumanji you're thinking of jumanji i am thinking of jumanji what were you thinking of the movie jungle cruise that but he world. wasn't jumanji wasn't he yeah Oh, okay. But Jungle Cruise is the new rock movie. Is it? I yeah. have no idea. <laughs> That's how uh, you watch TV. But but the rock, by the way, Rock Roman is a WrestleMania main event. Absolutely. That is what's softly on paper for WrestleMania in Dallas. Hundred thousand people. Mm. I mean, you need the freaking rock. You know what would be cool? Yeah. If they do and this is uh I feel like they're gonna do this. Did you see the end of Hobbs and Shaw? No, I've never I've n I have not seen any of the Fast and the Furious movies past the third one. Oh, you're in for a treat. because Tokyo get, Drift was the last one I saw. You're in for a treat. Besides with the point I'm going to make, those movies get dumber and dumber and was bigger Tokyo and Drift bigger. Was Tokyo Drift second or third? That was the second one. But no, chronologically, third. it's... The first. It's out of, like, order. Uh, anyway. So at the end of Hobbs and Shaw, uh, they're in Hawaii, okay. and uh, they have to use, like, ancient weapons, and they, they're all wearing, like traditional like skirts and they're doing like a haka and okay like, roman reigns is in one of these things because he's in the movie yeah, yeah, yeah and so is the rock i feel like that's going to be your match at wrestlemania it's going to be like the tribal chief match and they're going to have to wear like the hot these, these samoan you know I, like skirts i'd be oh, i'd be cool with that man. and do some hakas i'm into it i'm into it I'm we okay got a uh hakas. we got a 4.99 from ryan martin again if you want to jump the line with your super chats go right ahead you could uh with your questions, you could do a super chat and skip the line. You want to read that for me? Uh, from Ryan Martins, any other big returns coming other than the ones we've heard? Also, how does WWE plan to pivot from the cross Jeff match? Will he get his full entrance? I think that's what it's leading to. Yeah, it's going to lead to that. You know, like some uh, kind of weird pay-per-view thing. I, I mean, big returns. I, I mean, how many people are left to return? <laughs> that's I mean, true. You got, you got Goldberg. You got The Rock. You got John Cena. Yeah. You have Edge. Obviously, Orton's going to be wrestling, right? right? Another big name for them. Uh, Lesnar, uh, they're trying to figure out what they're going to do with him. Rob Van Dam. Uh, big returns. Big ret I'm talking like big names. Do you think they'll, they'll squeeze that one last match out of Austin? I don't think so. I think that, that ship sailed. Yeah? I think that ship sailed like in 2013. Okay. Yeah, it was a lot like 2012, 2013, that ship sailed. I think if there was any chance of that happening... Listen, here's a reality. Mm -hmm. If there was any chance of that happening, you would have had him on those Saudi shows. True. I know that. That he, is true. I know. I know that he like did some work in the ring to see how how well he would do, and maybe he just didn't feel confident about it. I mean, how much money are you going to throw to this guy? Maybe he doesn't want to do it. True. You know, it takes a lot to get past that hump, and that was a big part of his story that he was like, yeah. you know. It was very difficult for him to be out of the wrestling business, but now that he's comfortable with it, he's at peace. I think it's uh, psychologically too. Like, you, yeah. do you really want to come back and have like a boner of a match? No, I wouldn't want that yeah, if you're I, Steve Austin. Yeah. Uh, any any news on the Great Collie coming? But I have no idea about the Great Collie, nor do I care at all about the Great Collie returning. Didn't he die? 
No. no he's, <laughs> he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. That's, my, that's one of my favorite jokes, by the way. <laughs> uh, Taker coming back. Yeah, I would expect Taker to be back. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you want to jump in AEW? Yeah, let's go. So last night's show I thought was a lot of fun. I know we're going to discuss that aspect of it and the booking aspect of it. But it opened with uh, Chris Jericho's The Labors of Jericho. So this is the first, like The Labors of Hercules. This is the first week of The Labors of Jericho. And it's Sean Spears. Fun match. Yeah. Right? Clearly Jericho wasn't going to lose this right out the gate. MJF shows up at the end of the match. He announces the next opponent, uh, next opponent, opponent, next, next opponent on next week's okay. uh, AEW. Nick freaking Gage. How... How weird is that? It is a weird thing. Did you pop? Uh, you know what? I was on the train when it happened. I wasn't like, and I was like, <laughs> so I knew, you know, Cassidy told me uh, okay. when it was happening. By the way, $50 from Jacob. Just want to say, guys, you're doing big things. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Thanks, Jacob. Jacob. Cheers. If, much if I was drinking, I'd cheers my drink to you. Um, I thought I thought it was interesting. <laughs> Very unique. But man, <laughs> what is the pizza cutter? What? He took out the pizza cutter yeah. too, and he was yeah. like, ah. <laughs> so, and then we got Jericho uh, later on in the show showing oh, up as like everybody's favorite goth dad, the pain maker. Pain maker. So I good. tried to, so I took an edible last night. Oh, yeah. And I had like the funniest joke about him as like everybody's dad that wants to be cool. Mm -hmm. I couldn't articulate the joke, okay. and I can't freaking remember what it was, but I thought it was hysterical to myself. I also took one of those last night, and uh, my wife was like, you got to calm down. <laughs> oh, were you like, I, I, was, going, oh, yeah, I yeah. was going nuts watching this. Because I, I, I was laughing. It's like I, it's not a knock on Nick Gage. I think he's a, he's a smart guy. He, he is who he is, and he's, he's making a living doing at it. Doing it, I think if, if you think about it, think about it this way. Imagine if Hunter was like 15, and he's watching AEW, right? And you yeah. walk into the room and you don't know who Nick Gage is and he's waving the pizza cutter. Would you be like, hey, who's the pizza guy? Who's hey, who's that pizza guy? <laughs> who's that pizza cutting guy? <laughs> and then you have to go on YouTube and be like, oh, no. Uh, you also had Doc Gallows and Carl, uh, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson beating Frankie Kazarian. Good enough match. They murdered him. Why was everybody saying Wheeler Zarian? To me, I, I, did I, 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 I couldn't hear because I was listening on the show, but it was like Wheeler Zarian, Wheeler Zarian. Did they slip and call it Wheeler Something about Zarian? I don't know. Uh, this is Doc Allen's first singles match, too, on AEW. Was it? Yeah. Uh, Darby Allen with Sting beat Wheeler Yuta with Orange Cassidy. Sting, how did you feel about that face-off between Sting and Cassidy? Um, <laughs> Doing the comedy move. I never, I not, never pictured Sting. Listen, I'm, one of the, I'm still not like the Cassidy stuff. I uh, get it. I do. I get it. It's not my favorite stuff, but I get it. I thought, it was, I thought uh, the crowd loved it. So it worked. I'm very, I'm very easy when it comes to like things that don't work for me. Yeah. That I understand other people love. I'm not going to crap on what you love. Uh, I, I thought it was silly, but it worked. You know, that worked. People got into it. What did you think? Uh, I thought I was blown away that Sting actually did it. And I was like, yeah, this is mad fun. Good for Sting. He's not like, you know, he's pulling the veneer down a little bit. It's not like serious vigilante all the time. He could do like the wacky comedy shit. I think they were saying Wheeler's Aryan because he's got the same like beard and hair situation that you do. Is that what he's doing? Yeah. Do you know what he looks like? Who, Frank Zarian? No, uh, Wheeler. Wheeler Yuta. Is that why they were doing it? I think so. Look up what he looks like and it's like looking in the mirror for you. Really? Yeah. Take a look at that guy's face right here. He now. looks nothing like me. No? Oh, yeah. Yeah, see? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you were just looking at a picture of a wheel for a and second. And he's doing the Zarian face, too. He's mm. doing this. Mm. <laughs> Is that the Zarian face? <laughs> yeah, we, when we're all disappointed, we don't like something that someone's saying, we do this. Mm. 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 Oh, yeah. He is another one of my brothers. He's another one to add to that. Uh, add uh, add Mansoor to it. <laughs> <laughs> add Wheeler, Wheeler Yoda to it. Yuda to it. Uh, add, uh, I like Wheel Yoda. Who else can you add? Mustafa Ali. Oh, yeah. Add him to it. Frankie Kazarian, because we, we share a similar last the, name. The tribe of Zarian. The tribe of Zarian. I have my own stable. Mm -hmm. The tribal chief. Uh, AEW Women's Championship, Britt Baker, DMD, with Rebel, defeating Nyla Rose, Vicky Guerrero. Andrade El Idolo uh, had a segment with Death Triangle. <laughs> Chavo came out to an awesome pop, and he was there with Andrade. I thought that was a lot of fun. Uh, I think the, the weird back and forth between Andrade and Chavo... It was also funny, and then Andrade telling um, the Lucha Brothers that he's the face of the Latinos now. I can tell you that she, he was not the original pick. 
Right? Who was the original pick? I think it was going to be Zelina. Okay. Uh, I th- I like I like Chavo and him together, but my God, yeah. how many freaking managers do we have now? Chavo's great, man. Chavo Chavo's mic work last night was phenomenal. He looks so comfortable. Uh, you had Orange Cassidy versus the Blade, and your main event of the night. IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship Texas Deathmatch Lance Archer beating John Moxley didn't see that coming for the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship. What do you think about that match? I thought it was fantastic. What a match! Um, I got a lot of people like, "Oh, their their dome match was better." I'm like, you, it's a, it's like saying like, "Oh, you know, the WrestleMania match these two had was way better than the right. TV match." Yeah, listen, I didn't think it was better. I didn't think it was worse. Right. I thought it was different, and I loved every moment of it. I'm not a big death match guy. I'm not a big hardcore wrestling guy, mm-hmm. but they did everything right. I thought Moxley did a fantastic job at making this dude. Look like a psychopath, like Bruiser mm-hmm. Brody style guy. Yeah. You know what it was? It was Funkin' Brody. Yeah. That's exactly what they did. Mox took that crazy bump on the chairs. Did you see that? The chairs I back couldn't to believe back. it. I stopped it and I looked at Jess and I was like, holy, because I was home by then. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. Holy moly. Uh, and another like weird teaser at the end of the match, uh, Hiku Leo came out from Bullet Club, who is Tamatanga and. Tangaloa's and Tangaloa's brother. little brother, who's okay. gigantic. I'm going to ask you something. Sure. And this is when we talk about difference in booking, mm-hmm. right? When we talk about, you know, WWE's booking philosophy and AEW's mm-hmm. booking philosophy and, and other Japan, New Japan's booking philosophy. I think a lot of, a lot of viewers now, we watch wrestling mm-hmm. in the eyes of a WWE product. Okay. Because that's what we know. That's what we know wrestling is for the last 20 years with no competition. On a mainstream scale. Mm-hmm. Uh, would WWE ever, ever have ended that show the way that AEW did? No. With a unknown right. a guy that nobody... I'm going to say, even that building that's a smart building, they didn't know who this dude was. They just saw a big dude with a Bullet Club shirt. Ba- a big dude with a Bullet Club shirt, and they pop for the Bullet Club, and they yeah. pop for New Japan. <clears throat> but they really don't know who this guy is. And, mm-hmm. and rightfully so. But you know what? <clears throat> he Jeez. got a freaking reaction. <clears throat> yeah. And it made you now, if they, if they didn't do that, and they announced like, oh, next week on Dynamite, mm. nobody's going to care. They put him way over on commentary. They also. put this guy over on commentary. They put this guy over at, at the final segment and a stare down. You could tell he was a little nervous, though. Yeah. You could tell that he was a little nervous, but fine, cool, whatever. They're giving a unique opportunity to a guy to be in a main event position, you know, for challenging for a title. I thought it was freaking awesome. Absolutely. Great job. Uh, you know, there's other things I didn't really care for. That Britt Baker match was not great. Yeah, all right. They didn't care for that. But, but they have such a they have such a deep roster that you got to put people on different shows at different times. You know. Yeah. Um. Great ending. Uh. Nice and bloody match. Uh, I do like how on commentary they were like, you know, you see this guy from you see this guy on TV and he looks so small, but up close, Picolero looks gigantic, like eight feet tall. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it was cool. And we're getting a fight for the fall next, next week, too. Yeah, so next week's card, do you have it? Yeah. All right. uh, Jericho versus Nick Gage in a no DQ match. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I wonder if he's going to let him uh, pizza pie slice him on the tongue. With the pizza you think that, you, What do you think Jericho's going to do? You think he's going to get nuts? I want to see Jericho get, like, real nuts. You know, like, barbed wire bat, staple gun, nail gun. I wanted to. I wanted to be an episode of Jackass. <laughs> uh, you have FTR versus Santana and Ortiz. That's going to be fun. Christian Cage and Jurassic Express versus Private Party and Angelico. Uh, IWGP US Heavyweight Championship. Lance Archer versus Hikaleo. And you have an elimination tag match. Uh, the Elite. This is like a trio elimination tag match. Uh, Kenny Omega, Young Bucks, and Good Brothers versus Hangman and Dark Order. Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, John Silver, and Alex Reynolds. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be a, a solid main event. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought at the beginning of AEW this was going to be like your the feud that you're vested in? Like Omega Bucks, Gallows and Anderson versus Hangman and the Dark Order. Wild. Have you ever seen yourself becoming a big fan of Evil Uno? No, but I'm into it. Yeah. I'm into the whole thing. I'm into Hangman. I think this has been great for Hangman. I think the tease has been wonderful. You know, they've done a really good job with this. They've also, done a really, really good job. Also, apparently, Tony Khan will announce a major new live event. I don't know what this is. Okay. Uh, 
So, by the way, I, I didn't, I don't know why people are DMing me. The, I think we announced this a while ago. The tentative plan is Brooklyn. Yeah. We, uh, we announced that like a couple months ago. Yeah. Uh, you want to give a little plug on how people could fund us and, and support us while we get ready for the Q&A segment? Get your questions ready, boys and girls. Absolutely. Guys, if you're in the chat room, super chat us. You know, like uh, these donations good for a good cause, which is beers after we do the show. <laughs> um, we appreciate every single one of you. But, you know, like we said during the whole show, if you have a question and you want to get it to the front of the line, super chat us. We're going to knock these questions out very soon. Uh, fund us on Patreon. Uh, patreon.com slash Matt Men Podcast. Uh, you can check us out on Twitter. Uh, all social media, Matt Men Podcast, Andrew Zarian, BTC Rich. Uh, follow us, subscribe to the channel, like do all that stuff that you got to do. Um, and, you know, we're really enjoying this. We've been doing this for 10 years and now it's like, it, buddy, it's taken off. <laughs> it's, it's really, it really has. The last couple of months have been uh, unbelievable. It really has. Uh, I think it's, we're, we're on a cool roll here. We're going to be, uh, I'm still working on S SummerSlam, by the way. I have a little issue with this. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I have a little issue with this. Uh, but we're going to be in Brooklyn, oh, Brooklyn, Jesus. We're going to be at, uh, at Arthur Ashe on September 22nd for AEW Dynamite. We're also going to be at All Out in uh, Chicago, September 3rd. Hell yeah. Or 4th, whatever date is, September 3rd. I think that show is going to be a blockbuster show. I think so, too. I think it's going to be awesome. Do you think somebody that rocks is going to show up at that show? No. No, no, no. Dwayne has not showed up at AEW. I was trying to think of the rest of his movies. I was like, But it's me, the reptilians. Is it? Oh, my the God. The men. That's a pretty good uh, Alex Jones. I can't do it. I, I destroyed my voice for two Your years. Your Alex Jones is also a comparable. Um, Larry King. Uh, Nixon. Oh, I am not. Yeah, it is a pretty good Nixon. It's a comparable Nixon. Uh, yeah. Taylor Jones, 10 bucks. Thank you. No relation to Alex Jones, I'm assuming. And she says, Cheers, guys. Cheers. And. Fight me in the chat. <laughs> Five bucks. Thanks, bud. Uh, hey, guys, do you think the punk return is going to actually happen? Or is this one of those classic Sam Punk is returning things? Um, I don't know. Uh, I, th I've heard nothing on CM Punk other than Sean Ross Sapp's report. Mm -hmm. And Sean uh, generally has a terrific track record. So I could just go based on that. I, I personally don't know much about the CM Punk return thing. Got it. Uh, I would imagine that, you know, what's interesting? WWE did want AJ for something a while ago. I can't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. Can't remember. Um, would you say that this person is the king of scorpions? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, Mike D199, do you think Becky returns to Raw or SmackDown? Becky's returning any day. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, by, I said this the other day, and I think I, I repeated it. I repeated what someone in WWE told me they're like mm -hmm. oh yeah it's like any day now any day now so I don't know what that means I don't know if it's this week next week the following week but it's gonna be soon they're taking a pregnancy approach to her return they any, are any day now Dude, and I gotta tell you she's in remarkable in-ring condition right now uh we got five dollars from that bean cheers to my favorite guys from Queens keep up the great work thanks bud nice uh we got Tim Anger long time uh supporter of the show thanks Tim 20 bucks is WWE killing cross he is destroying NXT but can't stand in Raw and SmackDown. We're in a Q&A segment, right? Yes. Uh, I don't think they're killing him. I think it was one time. It was they, This was the first time he showed up, and we'll see what happens next week. I, I, I don't want to say that they ruined this guy mm. after one week. And, and we listen, at the end of the day, Bobby Lashley was shaking his ass and was in a cuckolding angle, and that now he's the world champion. So, uh, you know, ruin is a very strong word. Yeah, ruin is hard. Um, let's see. Do you want to jump into the rest of the Q&A? Yeah, let's do, do it. Do you want to do the Twitter stuff first or no? Yeah. Okay. Because there's a lot on Twitter. All right. We got we got about 25 minutes. Okay. From uh, Kuro Metariko. Got any scoops? Oh, stop. <laughs> the whole show. From uh, Manny Boy 3298. Can you all confirm Punk or Danielson stuff? We've been talking about it. Uh, all show. All show. I cannot. I, I personally cannot mm. confirm it, but I've heard the same rumblings and, and people within these companies are now talking. So. From at Michael Way. At Michael. From at Michael Wayne 360, are any rumors regarding WWE full October dates and Royal Rumble 22 dates and location? Can you read that again? Are there any rumors regarding WWE's full October dates and the Royal Rumble 2022 20, date? I don't have full October dates. I do. I do have a. This was prior to the schedule going out. What the schedule is for like mm -hmm. the touring? Uh, I know that Barclays was a heavy contender to hold Survivor Series. Mm -hmm. Um. Beyond that, I don't have any other October dates. 
Uh, I got a couple of questions from our buddy Vibor. Uh, Vibor! Apart from Cena, Goldberg, and Edge, are there any further part-timers scheduled to wrestle or appear at SummerSlam? Who could host it apart from Cardi B? Uh, I don't know if Cardi B's hosting it anymore. Dua Lipa. She's pregnant. Both of them pregnant? No. Cardi B is. <laughs> Once upon a time, the, 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 the sucking it. Oh boy. That's every song, right? Yeah. Once upon a time, I was sucking it, mm-hmm. right? Isn't that, isn't that like every, every <laughs> lyric in a Cardi B song? The Shawn Michaels suck scene. it, suck it, suck it. Uh, uh, do you think John Cena's Money in the Bank pop was the loudest he's ever gotten? In his whole I career? think. I think. I don't know if it was the loudest. Uh, people were. I, I put a poll up and I said, "Is this louder than the 2008 pop at the Garden when he showed up after like he was supposed to be gone for like 13 months and he showed up in like a week?" Yeah. Uh, I, it was loud, but there were plenty of boos because that building wanted Triple H to win. Yeah. That Rumble. Uh, so I, I would say that this was the most unanimous. Uh, baby face pop that he had. Do you think they're piping in extra audio? I don't know. I I didn't think. Mm. Uh, SmackDown. Everybody was saying that they did. So may uh, there was some. I don't know if there was sweetening. Maybe there was a little bit of sweetening. I'm not totally against sweetening. Yeah, sweet it up a little bit. You know what? You know. You know. Every every wrestling show is sweetening the audio. You know how you do that? You pot it all the way up, mm. and you place my. You do. You know who was the king of sweetening the audio? Uh, Paulie. Paulie. Yeah. Yep, Paulie. You can make a building with 10 people sound like you had 10,000. Do you think the Olympics going to hurt the WWE rating? I'm very curious about that because uh, I spoke to a friend of mine that uh, works on one of the networks. And they said that there's the anticipation from a, some people is that the Olympics are not going to have the umph that they did this year yeah. due to all the restrictions. And there's it's kind of politicized and the restrictions mm-hmm. and everything going on. I think a lot of people are turned off to it. Uh, but I, I don't even, I don't think it's, I listen, of course it's going to hurt them a little bit. I don't know. I don't know to what capacity. Uh, okay. Do you want to talk about P1s and P2s? No. Okay. No, I'm going to go to sleep. Okay. You want to see me go to sleep? You talk about them P1s and P2s. Do you want to talk about analytic indicators? Talk about them analytic indicators. (laughs) You some bitch. (laughs) Imagine if that guy, instead of being a wrestler, ended up being uh, like a numbers guy. Like a numbers guy. Yeah. We're down. Sales are down. Sales are down. We got to pump up the P2s. Uh, hey, Andrew and Rich, do you want to see CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan next year at Double or Nothing? God, yeah. yeah. Of course. Absolutely. Uh, fifth Generation Carney, do you think t- uh, Tony Khan can squash the beef between Colt and CM Punk? I don't think there needs to be mediation. They're adults. I don't, I, I don't even know if they have squashed it, if they didn't squash it. I thought that whole thing was silly. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, it, it's pretty cut and dry. Cole Cabana got sued because of something CM Punk said on the show. Right. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't know. That's a good lesson for podcasts, old podcasts. Yeah. Uh let's see. From Pratik, when when is Brock Lesnar coming back? But he said when Brock Lesnar coming back. I, I <laughs> they they're gonna have him back as soon as they could have him back. When Brock Lesnar. I you know, I gotta tell you, I had no idea Brock Lesnar was such a mega star in India. Yeah, dude. Because almost every single Brock Lesnar question is coming from viewers in India. You know, by the way, Indian market, tremendous market. Do you know how yeah. many people annually watch WWE in India? All of them. Oh, every single one. <laughs> billions. Uh, 300 and It's over 350 million Jeez, wow. viewers annually wow. to WWE product wow. in India. They get about three to four, anywhere from like, let's say three to five million viewers a week. Wow. For, their, for I think, Raw. That's a Raw number. So... Interesting. Let's see what we got here. Um, any news on Becky Lynch? Like we said, this is from Itchy Boy Kevin. Uh, like we said, it's any day now. Apparently, uh, apparently, it, it's as soon as they 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 it's time because they do have a plan. It's mm. just a matter of when. So maybe maybe you're gonna get a match at SummerSlam. I don't know. True. Uh, from Frank Agradia. What about Tessa Blanchard, Andrew? I never want to hear her name ever again. <laughs> I, 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 I I have no idea. Uh, I I'm gonna tell you this. If WWE was signing her, mm. they would have signed her already. I don't think AEW is signing her. I could be wrong about this. I don't know. I, yeah. Here's the God's honest truth. I don't know. I know that there was a lot of indicators that she was possibly going to WWE. But uh, there's also a lot of people saying that it's, it's an impossibility. So okay. I have no idea. And I'm not even... I, I'm so, I've gotten asked about Tessa Blanchard so many times that I don't even want to like dig into it mm-hmm. anymore. Uh, from Matthew Banson, what about AJ Lee? Any chance she goes to AEW? I feel like she should. She could bring a lot to that women's yeah, division. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too, but I don't know if she wants to wrestle. Who knows? It's I'm been a, many years. Yeah. Listen, taking taking that much off 
mm-hmm. time off. You, you you grow and you you change, and sometimes you don't want to do it anymore. You want to go. You want to do something else. Mm. You know. Uh, any news? This is from Orion. Any news on the Mayon Classic that was supposed to happen last year? Will it happen this year? No, but I know that they they are planning on doing a Queen of the Ring. Mm. How bad did did Peacock f up on Sunday night? Oh, bad! You didn't yeah. see it, right? No, because on on Monday oh, the replay was fine. The Men's Money in the Bank was unwatchable. Like no, you couldn't watch it. It that was stinks. like t- the whole thing was almost ruined. Hey, Andrew, why India not having a W Dynamite? Why does I don't know? Maybe they haven't worked the. Uh, the TV deal yet? Uh, from Shocker One Two Three. How many matches do you think are are going to be on SummerSlam? At least ten. About uh, forty. Forty. Well, no, matches? no. They they want no. They're going to end the show early. Remember, they 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 are planning on ending the show with mm. enough time for you to go to the uh, the Pacquiao fight. Right. Okay. So, uh, I don't know. I, it, what time does it start? It'll probably start at seven, right? No. Seven to ten. No. Remember, it's early. Over there, it's early. Oh, that's right. Three hour time difference. Four in the afternoon. So I I, I, I forgot what time they start, but they're start four or five in the afternoon. Because if it's four there, it's going to be seven here. So that's probably it. Uh, Brendan, any rumor on a potential Adam Cole call up at this point? If he never goes to the main roster, I just want to see him in AEW. Um, I've heard nothing right now. All right. Uh, last question. What do you think? Yeah. Will NXT be part of Survivor Series this year? And will it rock? Uh, and, uh, Survivor Series <laughs> will rock this year. Uh, I don't know if NXT is going to be part of it. I don't know mm-hmm. how the plan is changing for Survivor Series. I don't have the the the, the concept. Uh-huh. Uh, MG, uh, MG Geek, all good. No worries at all. Don't worry about it whatsoever. Uh, Mike D, 499, if AEW gets Punk and Brian, do you think they can move Dynamite to Monday to compete with Raw? No, I think that would be a huge, stupid mistake. We've seen what happens when that happens yeah uh, you don't you know here's the thing though about wrestling you don't need to compete on the same night anymore no like that 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 like the viewership is so different now mm-hmm. where like aw weekly does around like 1.2 to 1.4 million viewers yeah uh and i'm saying like with dvr numbers and everything like i don't know how many people pass through but i know for smackdown it's about 5 million people pass through smackdown mm-hmm. weekly to watch the product uh, I don't know what their plus uh, all the total combined DVR is, but uh, I don't I don't think they're going to they want to jeopardize that. You know, why would you why would you split your audience? That's true. You know, and I and I I don't think I don't think it's smart. Yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm excited for the Rock to show up at Survivor Series, to be honest with you. Yeah. Do you uh, think uh, do you think he'll apply his central intelligence? No, I think so. I think he's going to do all of his characters. He's going to do. Uh, he's going to be Maui from Moana. He's going to be Maui from Moana. That'd be amazing. Moana. He's going to be all the characters. The guy from Skyscraper. Skyscraper. Uh, regarding the India TV deal, Tony Schiavone actually said it's almost set and about to happen in October. Soon, back in October. So I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Uh, and also, we I think we 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 discussed this. SummerSlam is going to be airing in movie theaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the first time, and I think this is going to be something that WWE wants to continue doing. They've been wanting to do this for over a decade now. Uh, when we go- when we go into aid, when we going to get a different stage set for Dynamite? I have no idea. I, mm-hmm. I haven't heard that they're planning on changing it. Uh, how many of those are P two viewers though? Kidding. <laughs> uh, The Rock wrestling at Survivor Series? No, I don't believe so. No, don't quote me on it. He all I know is that he's he, tentatively on paper. Mm-hmm. The plan was to have him there. Now watch them not do it. <laughs> uh, just to spite you? Just to spite me. Specifically. No, listen, I, I could only go based on what was said to me. This was said to me by by three different people. Mm-hmm. Uh, one within WWE, one from USA, and one from Fox. Yeah, yeah. That they all had, they knew about this. Wouldn't, would that be our biggest get as far as an interview? Dwayne? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. He's the biggest <laughs> star in the world. There's nobody a bigger actor than that. It's like saying like you got Schwarzenegger at the peak of his career. What would you ask him? First question. Um, I would ask him what his favorite matches. Yeah, that he's ever watched. Uh-huh. That he's ever watched. That he's ever seen. Yeah. Can you do a rock impression? No, I can't. It's hard, right? I could do it. Okay. You want right. me to do it? I, I'm, re- I'm ready. Hey, it's me, the Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, me and the Blasio. Do something about the garbage here. Come on. Uh, will John Cena continue after SummerSlam? Uh, I think so. I think it'll be around. Can you see The Undertaker having one more match? I don't want to, but possible. But I know that they're going to they're gonna bring him out for sure for some mm-hmm. of these shows. 
Uh, what happened to Randy Orton? Is he injured? Did I miss something? I don't know where he is. Ooh, you know what would be a good return? Batista. Oh, this is a great question. Jason, will we have to be fully vaxxed to enter Barclays Center in November? I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> know that. I don't know what Barclays yeah. policy is. Um, that's a great question. But, I mean, that's an easy thing to know. Uh, if you go on, I, I mean, I could do it too. You go on uh, events, you could see that mm. if they're requiring a vaccination or a, uh, or a test. I know that nothing is required for Yankees or Mets right now. You don't even have to have a PCR. You can just walk in. Yeah, you just walk right in and uh, start licking everything. The policy for the garden is not a state policy or a city policy. It's their own policy. It's a Jimmy Dolan policy mm-hmm. uh, that he's put on to every one of his venues. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is It's an MSG thing. So I don't know what Barkley is planning on doing in November. Uh, you know, we got some time yet. It's a G thing, baby. And listen, I don't know what, what, what MSG is going to continue doing moving yeah. forward. You know, when they start seeing that they're not selling out, and how expensive it is to run the venue, the, the garden. Maybe they'll drop and maybe they don't. I, I have no idea. What's next for Keith Lee? Will he be at SummerSlam? I have no idea. Yeah. No All right. Time to wrap it up. How did John Cena escape the Firefly Funhouse? That is a question that I've been wondering. He jumped real hard. And maybe, yeah, maybe he jumped really hard. Like he just bursted through the walls, the ceiling. All right. All right, guys. Uh, that's it for this week. Appreciate every single one of you. If you enjoy the show, do us a favor. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. The podcast is everywhere. Listen, I know you guys watch on YouTube, but go to your favorite podcast app, right? Search Matt Men Podcast mm-hmm. and hit the subscribe button. Give us the review. We love you guys. Uh, Patreon.com slash Matt Men Podcast. If you enjoy the show, you can fund us there as well. You can fund us here on the Super Chat. And we have a lot more coming. We'll see you all next time. Later. Take care.